Alright, what is up ladies and gentlemen? Deadman here. I've been uh, I, I, a little bit lenient yesterday. It was my day off, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take a take a day. So, um, stream maybe tomorrow, Thursday, or Friday. Whichever one comes first, so I'll figure it out. But until then, I'm going to uh, do this recording. And what am I going to do today? I'm going to react, obviously. And what am I going to react to? Well, you know Mr. Nightmare and when I, from when I tried to uh, scare my friend with videos. So I'll go watch that video. We watched Mr. Nightmare and a bunch of other things. But yeah. Uh, but what I didn't show was Chilling Scares. I don't know if that would have put the fright and fear of God in him. But <clears throat> I mean, there are some pretty scary things on here. Um, either some stories or disturbing footages like a police cam or something like that. But yeah. The, uh, I was thinking, l l let's take a look at some police cam footage, because sometimes po the police are like, I guess, they, they, they sometimes run into some freaky things, and they capture on their dash cam footage, I'm pretty sure. But, um, enough dilly-dallying, let's get into it. Interesting. Alright, what are the six things caught in there? In August of 2012... The dash cam of this police cruiser would capture an officer with the Louisville Metro Police Department pulling over a Honda Accord that had expired plates. Three were inside the vehicle, and upon talking to them, the officer conducting the traffic stop would quickly pick up on the nervous and anxious behavior they were giving off. A few seconds later, and the officer would hear the sound of kicking and yelling coming from inside the trunk of the vehicle. This is when the officer would call for backup, and have to forcefully detain the three suspects. While the officers on scene would then cautiously open the trunk, they would find a man with a towel tied around his head and his hands tied around his back. Holy crap. The man inside the trunk turned out to be the owner of the vehicle. He had been working the closing shift at a Circle K gas station seven miles down the road. Dang! Once he closed up the store and started walking to his car, he would be attacked. The three suspects would then steal the man's car. What? But rather than leave him behind, they would tie him up and stuff him in the trunk of his own car before fleeing with it. But why the- <laughs> Following the incident, the three responsible would be arrested. They were later identified as 27-year-old Trent Bly, 27-year-old Joseph Davis, and 28-year-old Brittany Elder. Oh my god! What they had planned to do with the victim Brittany. is still unknown. Well, the oh plates my on god. the car had not been expired. The traffic stop likely would not have even happened, and the victim would have been at the complete mercy of these people and their intentions. Other than being For locked real. up and moderately dehydrated from the heat of the trunk, the victim would make it out unharmed. All right, but oh, oh, they, uh, they guess they detained them, but it's all right. The Mr. December nineteenth, two thousand seventeen, the Tucson Police Department in Arizona would receive a disturbing call reporting a man who looked to be impersonating an undercover cop. Yes. Good night. The yeah. caller stated that he, along with a couple friends, had been parked on the side of the road when a man claiming to be an undercover cop pulled up next to Aww, him. Aw, come on. He further stated they had all been searched, and one of them was even put in handcuffs. What? The police would verify that whoever they were with was in no way affiliated with law enforcement. Multiple police would be sent to the scene. However, when they arrived, they were informed by the group that upon calling the police, the impersonator would hastily drive off. Even leaving one of the guys still in handcuffs. Oh my god. I forgot subtitles. Alright, my bad. Okay, but for real, dude's gonna pull up and inspect them and then just leave. <sighs> oh, jeez. How's it going? Oh. You guys live here? Uh-oh. Huh? You guys live here? It's alright. What are you guys doing? Can you help me out? Wow. I... I don't know what his motives were behind this or what he exactly was planning to do, but it it seemed like he had absolutely no idea what he was doing. And wow, even going as far as to handcuff him, leave him there, and then just leave him handcuffed. It's days later, detectives were able to track down the identity of the impersonator. <laughs> Amazing. And he would quickly be arrested. All right. With the help of a search warrant, officers were able to confiscate multiple items used during the incident. These included a white four-door sedan with built-in red and blue flashing lights, a radio earpiece, a baton, and what? a dash cam. 
Upon further inspection of the dash cam, police found that it had been recording the whole thing. Not only that, it also showed multiple other times that the impersonator had pulled over and confronted different people. <laughs> No way! Dude incriminated himself even further! I don't know what he was- He doesn't even have a- Well, okay. Hold on. My only thought is, of course, officers can go in that, um, normal clothes sometimes. But other than that, I guess it's not- I don't know. I mean, come on. Dude is just incriminating himself with a dash cam as well. I don't know what he's hoping to pull- to, to pull when he pulls over people. But, oh my god, I don't think it's, it, like, he knew what he was doing. motives for doing this aren't exactly clear. Exactly. The fact that he was willing to even go as far as putting people in handcuffs doesn't make them look good. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine what his true intentions were. Ultimately, he would receive charges of impersonating a law enforcement officer and kidnapping. Kidnapping? Well, I guess I can see with the handcuffs. But, jeez, the guy... This is just ridiculous. This dash cam footage shows the response to a 911 call reporting a burning truck. Oh, the crud. Call was made in the late hours of February 11, 2017 in Glen Heights, Texas. It was reported that a truck engulfed in flames was stopped in the drive through lane of a jack-in-the-box, dangerously close to the building itself. Oh, jeez. Officer Chris Womack was the first respondent on scene. When he arrived, it was clear that the truck was to the point where it could explode at any time. So, thinking quick, the officer bravely used his own patrol vehicle to push the truck to okay, a safe distance from the restaurant building. Yo, Chris is a legend, for real. Going in there, get like, I guess, <laughs> trying to get the truck out of the way. I don't even know how to... Well, you never know with the truck, but at the same time, I don't know how it would get like that. Like, jeez. But hey, hats off to Chris for going out there and stopping, or at least getting the truck further away if it can was able to save any damage to the building. It was also able to save any injuries from occurring, as yeah. none were ever reported. Perfect. I say we need about Chris out there. Richard Lee McNair Legend. was a man born in 1958 in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh he come was on. Just 28. He Oklahoma? Was two life sentences for murder and attempted murder during come a burglary on. gone wrong. However, Look at this dude. more well known for his escapes during his time in prison. I heard he about this guy. Successfully escaped He's a law freaking genius. A total of three different times. His first three. escape didn't last that long, only able to stay on the outside for a matter of minutes. And the second escape was a little different. Nine months out of prison as a fugitive on the run. Then, on April 5, 2006, McNair would make his third and final attempt at escaping. It was successful, but seemingly not for long. As he was running on the side of the road, a police officer would notice him. And because police were informed of an escapee at the time, the officer would stop him. <laughs> ah. Devil. The officer got, okay. You, you live around here, buddy? No. Where you live oh, at? No. Down the road by, uh, Pineville. Pineville? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have any form of identification on you? No, man. Alright. Cool. Yep. Yeah, dude right. says... What is going got an escaping? on a oh. jog? <laughs> wow, he We're fooled from. this officer completely. We're prison. We're prison here? Yeah. The whole event is caught <laughs> on the police <laughs> officer's you know dash cam, and it shows as McNair desperately fabricates information in an attempt to convince the officer he's not the escaped prisoner. Where you? Where's exactly. your address? I don't have an address. I'm at the hotel. We're working on. Uh, oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Roofing. Okay. For my brother. Alright. I mean... Where are you staying at? That uh, Titusville or Titus Inn? Titus Inn. Little old. Little old. Uh, Where's that at? I don't even know the address. We just got into town about a week ago. And I mean... Me off to jog. I always jog. Honestly, uh, he's thinking uh, of this pretty... Off like, off the top, top of his... Road by, uh, of the top of his brain. Down up there, out, uh, uh, and he dropped me off. Who do y'all work for? It is... It's his... Uh, I know what's the name Ruben, of the company. Fields Roofing. Okay. <laughs> Did you go through a briar patch or something? Well, yeah, roofing. I always roof in shorts and cut my. Uh, I don't know about that. You know, the roofing. That's why your knees are all cut up. 
McNair's ability to quickly come up with fake information oh, yeah. proved extremely helpful in convincing the officer he had nothing to do with the escape. I mean... However, he would make a couple mistakes. Exactly, that's the one At thing. At the beginning of their conversation, the officer asks for McNair's name. He does this once again near the end of their conversation. What's your name? Robert Jones. Robert Jones. Robert Jones. What's your name again? Jimmy Jones. McNair gives two different fake names. Though the officer doesn't catch this, and in the end, yeah, the how does he not go thinking he's just a jogger? What? I, I, I still do not understand said, well, that. How lucky can I be? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not no prison escapee. Wow. I'm sorry to have to hold you up. Hey, right, no, I'm just doing my job, man. I know you are. That but, is um, crazy. Yeah, just be careful. You'll probably get stopped again. Okay? Yeah. Don't, don't be alarmed by. It. Alrighty, That's hey, our quick line there. Have a good day now. Be careful, buddy. Thank you. All right. Dang. This crucial mistake would allow Richard McNair to remain free for a full year and a half after Woo! this encounter. Once he was finally discovered again by law enforcement, he would be sent to a supermax prison in Florence, Colorado, <laughs> the most secure prison in all of the United States. Dang. Another attempt to escape was never made by Richard Lee McNair. I mean. Uh, sh fool, fool him once, shame on him. Fool him twice, I mean, but three times. This police dash three footage times. comes from a California Highway Patrol vehicle. Uh -oh. Two officers inside were responding to a reported structure fire when a large mudslide is quickly revealed on the road. But once it's noticed, it's too late. There wasn't enough time for the driver to react. Therefore, the patrol vehicle is sent directly into it. Oh, crud. All four wheels are quickly elevated off the ground. Oh, no. <laughs> the vehicle around and forcing it with the current of the mudslide. Wow. Holy crap. Yeah, if your if your car is immediately taken by a mudslide, I'm you're all out of options. There's really nothing you can do. You just you're just going to have to hope that your car doesn't running into any Well, actually, ooh, that's a good Okay, that's a good thing about the mudslide. Maybe it might run you into something. I don't know. I don't know much about mudslides. I've Luckily, never been into one. By some miracle, the officers were able to regain traction and drive ahead of the slide. Yeah. By that point, there wasn't much they could do but warn pedestrians and watch the disturbing sight of the mudslide rushing down the road and tearing through their city. Dang. Exactly. Like, come on. You'll you never expect these types of things. And get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Go! Go! go, go, go. Yeah, I'm about to say, like, as it's happening, it's kind of in the, in the heat of a moment. You don't know what you're going to do. A, a very active mudslide coming down all of Mill towards the 101 right now. Oh, I forgot that. That yeah, flashing light. We heading north on all of Mill. We were able to barely escape, and we're down by the freeway now. But it's uh, there's a lot of debris and a lot of flow coming down. It should be on the uh, near the freeway very shortly. Okay, it's not flashing. Oh, oh, it's flashing again. No! Oh, there it is. There's the mudslide. Mike, get in the car. Mike, get in the car. Get in the car, Mike. Get in the car. Get in the fucking car. Mike, Jesus Christ. Honestly, cleaning up a mudslide must be crazy. In the early morning hours of July 27th, 2018, okay. police in Wyoming received multiple calls reporting a reckless wrong way driver on the highway. What? Officers Rob Meredith and Chris DeBoer were the first on scene. In order to stop the driver, the officers were forced to use their own police cruiser as a makeshift barricade. No freaking way. Their dash cam. Let's see it. Oh, here it comes. Oh, that's that honestly, okay. Taking a straight hit from a car, that's gonna. We are gonna set up like this. I mean, okay, it's good to stop it, but at the same time, the the impact. You gotta think about the impact. Like, he, oh. As the two set up, the headlights of the wrong way driver can be seen quickly approaching. Oh, there he is. Okay. Disturbingly, they're showing no signs of slowing down. Oh, no, they're diverting not. their vehicle's path to avoid a head on collision. They did. What? They don't even divert after they see it? Oh jeez! Holy crap! Right? Yep. I don't know. The reaction of Officer Chris DeBoer to turn the cruiser into the impact was the only thing saving the vehicles from a head-on collision. For real. Most likely fatal situation. 
The wrong-way driver later stopped further down the road and was taken to the hospital for treatment of injuries. Ah. He was a 60-year-old man and was charged with his third offense of operating a vehicle while intoxicated. Third As offense? for the okay. two police officers, they were lucky enough to make it out of the incident with only minor injuries. <laughs> minor injuries better than any other injuries. That is crazy. All right, guys. That I mean, that, I guess a quick like maybe fifteen minute video or some. But yeah, uh, if you want to see more me react to more chilling scares, there's a uh, part volume two to uh dash cam videos for police. So yeah, if you want to see that, uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn that notification bell. Yeah, I'm Dead Man, and this has been another reaction video. I'll see y'all with this. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Oh.